for an Aboriginal client uh, to receive its services from an Aboriginal organisation, it's a whole lot more comfortable than, than going to a, say, the Legal Aid Commission, where they don't readily identify with the service uh, deliverer. Um, where, whereas with a, with a, an ALS, they can more or less take ownership of it and say, "This is ours." And uh, along with that ownership, they expect more from you too. Uh, my name's Des Williams and I, uh, I live on the, a Tweed, on the Tweed River. Um, mother's country is around, around Nambuck Heads. Um, father's country is along the Richmond River. Yeah. Um, I'm a, um, a director with the New South Wales ALS. And I was asked to um, to stand in as director by uh, the local people at uh, at Grafton, really. And uh, I said yes quite readily because I've always been interested in the Aboriginal Legal Service. Um, my brother Gary Williams was uh, one of the founding members of the the ALS. Uh, himself, Gary Foley and Paul Carr, along with Hal Wooden. And they really were, they were the four um, initial founders of the uh, um, ALS. As an ATSIC commissioner, I was involved in making decisions that uh, concerned the uh, ALSs in not only New South Wales but right across uh, Australia and it was a struggle to uh, to get funding for for the ALSs uh, in the ATSIC days because of uh, government restrictions uh, that were placed on them and, uh, and the high amount of work that the ALSs did um, the, the funding just didn't match their activity. Uh, the ALSs couldn't, and probably still don't, uh, pay their solicitors uh, the same amount of dollars that um, the uh, Legal Aid Commission um, fund their solicitors. And as a result, the ALSs kept losing its, its trained solicitors to the um, Legal Aid Commission and and other law firms, um, uh, the outside interests regarded the uh, the experience gained by the ALS solicitors as uh, top training for solicitors of that kind. Uh, so they were they were highly prized. Uh, unfortunately for us, we couldn't pay them the the money that they deserved. Through the ATSIC Commission, I was involved in reforming the uh, Aboriginal Legal Services. Um, and it initially started with uh, the, the ALS that ran out of Redfern. Um, it was generally regarded as the, uh, or referred to as the uh, Redfern ALS. Um, it was headed by Paul Carr. Um, I, a lot of people were complaining about this, the non-delivery of service, uh, and so ATSIC did a, um, a review of our funding and, and the, the activities of the ALS, um, the Redfern ALS at that time. And of course I, uh, I was the bad, the bad person involved there because I was I was the, uh, chairing the committee that did the uh, did the reform, and a lot of people who were closely associated with the Redfern ALS sort of disliked me at various levels, from intense to mildly. 
Um, but in the end, it, it, it turned out uh, a good thing for the ALSs. It, um, it split the ALSs up in, into um, different services that were governed individually uh, to a, a, a stage now that um, the ALSs are uh, now governed uh, as a, a body that um, oversees uh, ALS work right throughout New South Wales. Um, I must say that the review that uh, ATSIC did into the ALSs here in New South Wales um, snowballed and that, that review process uh, went right across the country. The reform that we did to the governance made it a better service and uh, made the service delivery a lot, a lot easier, a lot more comfortable and the clients um, have appreciated uh, the type of service ne that uh, they now get through the ALSs. It's um, for an Aboriginal client uh, to receive its services from an Aboriginal organisation, it's a whole lot more comfortable than, than going to a, say, the Legal Aid Commission, where they don't readily identify with the service uh, deliverer. Um, where, whereas with a, with a, an ALS, they can more or less take ownership of it and say, "This is ours," and uh, along with that ownership, they expect more from you too seems to be more smooth now. Uh, the legal structure of New South Wales uh, was such that um, legal service boundaries could overlap as far as um, prisoner travel. And there was always that uh, position where one legal service had to brief the next door legal service about one of their clients coming into, into their area through the judicial system. That doesn't take place anymore because it's a, a single legal service that represents New South Wales and covers all the uh, judicial boundaries. Uh, in that sense, the operation is a whole lot smoother. It addresses the, the needs of the people a whole lot better because of, because of that uh, single entity. The field officer is a, uh, an extremely important link between, between the, uh, the legal staff of the ALS and, and the clients and their families. So it's, a, it's an extremely important role. We're coming up to a um, commemoration of um, Aboriginal deaths in custody uh, and their, their role, the uh, prisoner support officers uh, relate almost directly with, uh, with what uh, deaths in custody uh, discovered, if you like, in their research. They, they keep a close eye on, on the prisoners, uh, make sure they're, they're being treated right. Um, I don't know whether you can say uh, to make sure they they're comfortable where they are, but uh, they certainly they certainly have their needs and, and rights uh, as clients of ours inside the uh, incarceration system, and so they they need to be looked after fairly well.